So the last video I, I created, I talked about arm weight and dropping notes in the sense of gravity, but catching them with a soft landing because you have the supple wrist. So that's very important. And then I talked about the hanging hand, so you never have a rigid hand position. I talked a little bit about breathing. So a couple of ingredients. I also talked about rotation in conjunction with arm weight transfer and arm weight variation talked about forward wrist rolls. So these various ways of sculpting lines is not just arm weight, are not just arm weight, but they involve all kinds of accessories that are included with the arm weight. So I was looking at this second movement of the Mozart, the Andante of the 545. And when you start that B, if you fall down really hard on that B and have a stiff wrist, you're just going to get a punch. To have the supple wrist entry and landing into it, you also have to realize that it's a half note and it's going to have to then spill into 16th notes. So you have to sense, have the sense of continuity from the half note into the spacing of the 16th notes that come after it. So I have to imagine, another part of this is imagination, imagine the sound I want. Imagine before I play, I need to know what I want to hear myself do. So I know that that's a vocal model line there that's totally a singer. It could be a violinist too. But I'm thinking of a singer in particular singing that. And that first note would have to have a rising sense of it, which then flows effortlessly into the 16th notes. Now in order to start that note, I also want to take an inhale. That long exhale is going to go into that note, not the inhale with the relaxed inhale, as far as I can take it naturally, and then flowing out, externalizing it, but not playing the note right as I start the exhale, but a little into the stream. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to that note this way. I can almost pantomime what I'm going to do. Again, let's see if I can... That's what's going to feel like and look like to me because I already feel that sense of flowing out of silence into sound but on the stream of the breathing, the exhale. Continue. Now I have another higher next phrase we say it's going up, so it should intensify. It's on a higher level. It's going to start with a dotted quarter instead of another half note. It's still going to spill into 16. So I'm going to come in with a little bit more arm weight. I'm going to keep it. Now I have a dotted 8th 16th. See how I'm doing again? Continuous motion. This is the principal note, the C, sighing down. Now these are going up like a scale, but they have to go horizontal. And there's a little crescendo there, so, so it dips first. Each one is a little bit more arm weight. Now this is going to start coming out of that last note, which is deeper in the keys, or a little bit more arm weight. I'm going to start the 16th, are starting to come down. So in order to get the diminuendo, I have to start with a deeper level of arm weight so that I can bring down that long set of 16ths. And I'm going to think of them in groups of four. Here again, you have to know how you're going to phrase it. I think of this as waves of four. So I came out of this. Keep that same bigger sound when you start. New phrase. Pick up. Now here's another thing here. I'm dragging like vowels, sounds. There's no attacking these notes. They're streaming into that note. Just. So I want to avoid. 
avoid that. The first D is looping then around into the G. So you get this and rest. Uh, start soft. When I do that, I'm thinking of the C of those four notes being the principal, the principal melodic note that then loops down twice. T autumn. You can see how I use that those wrist rolls that really help uh, prevent uh, the Rosie the Riveter finger punches or the pencil punches so that you don't get the equality of those four notes but you get the curvaceous quality of it and you know what the main note is that you're going to thread through the four notes. It's the C. What it is? C. And we're starting a new little idea. Most. Wrist forward. When I say wrist forward, that cushions the, uh, the cadence so it doesn't poke, but it melts. Lean and less. So if you use a f two fingers there and you go finger, finger, A, G, you're not going to get the beautiful melted resolution. That's exactly what you want to hear yourself do. <laughs> Breathing helps too. <laughs> and there's my hanging hand again. And I talked about the left hand at the last um, YouTube video that I made. And I said you really have to get this. better of harmony as I pointed out in the last video. That's going to have that particular figure for this whole page as really going to stay pretty much uniformly pretty soft so it doesn't drown out the soloist because it is basically accompaniment. It's definitely accompaniment and that's why I always like to play chords out of these, make them into chords before I do a broken chord so I can feel my arm weight and feel my arm floating so I get this wrist motions. It's a shell shock avoider of a punch fall down hard sound and allows you to sculpt because you're always sculpting the lines. Of course after you do the chords through that a left hand and keep them very you want to get that nice. There's a couple of other things that happens in this. Sometimes you're playing faster note values like eighth notes and then you're going to the next measure which is a longer note that's tied. You can't enter across the measure quickly into the longer note that's tied because if you were playing a string instrument you would draw the bow slower and you'd make the entrance into the longer note slower. The equivalent on the piano would be delaying, delaying the entry into the tied or longer note that is following the shorter note value. I'll give you an example when I had here. Not only did I get softer, but there's a slight delay when I went into that longer note. Did it again there. It's not going to be extreme, and then I'll be playing Chopin, but it's not extreme, but it just helps the color of the rhythm get a, a specific color to a long note tied, 
a color to a dotted eighth of a six dotted eighth sixteenth figure, you have to know the color of the rhythm in your ear of what you want to do. And the color of the rhythm when you start is, of course, is that way you enter it. Changes here. You can see how that works. Delay. Delayed it again. I was softer, I had less arm weight, but I delayed that dotted eighth part. Mm -hmm. It really is something you have to do with Mozart, particularly because it's a vocal model. Uh, so the vocal modeling in the playing, knowing what you want to hear, of course, it's a challenge. Play bigger energies, you get much more beautiful phrasing all around.